Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, bravo before the start. Uh, not deserved, but let's see. Uh, how are you doing, Inspiration? Hangover after yesterday's party? I, I skipped it on purpose, and I think I I'm the winner for today. I will tr try to do, do, my do my best at this presentation. Uh, my name is Philip, and once again, hello, Inspiration. I'd like to keep this speech uh, kind of interactive, so if you want to throw a tomato at me, if you want to shoot, to ask a question, uh, feel free. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of, of dry jokes. It's called a suhari yeah? in Poland. So whenever you, you hear a dry joke, you can, you can also throw a, throw a tomato. Uh, I'm representing Kubraum, uh, which is Deutsche Telekom's innovation hub supporting startups. So innovative companies from the, from the region of Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, and basically, I'm also a semi-professional poker poker player, uh, skier, amateur, and a guy who is doing many different stuff. Um, apart from this, I made the presentation on Bispiration uh, 2014, so exactly three years ago. And to be honest with you, I feel pretty ashamed of it. It was my failure, really. It wasn't good. It wasn't good long enough. Um, but everything changed. I hope so, yeah, Sin since then. Uh, this is the second example. It's me, looking like a, like a fucking John Lennon from the Beatles, and I'm also ashamed of this photo. Uh, it's me taking part in, in Startup Weekend in Krakow with our mobile, uh, mobile health application for caring parents, and we also failed with this application. Yeah? You see, the, this presentation will be about failing somehow. Um, so basically, we tried to get an investor, we developed the solution. Uh, we had a good team, me, my friend programmer, business guy, but somehow we, we failed. And to, to feel more comfortable, to make me happy, I tried to look for many other uh, examples of, of failure in the internet, and I found this, this weird thing. Do you, do you know what, what's this? It's called monowheel. Uh, it's the innovation which was developed in 1931. Uh, it was pretty successful for some time from the PR, uh, for the PR reasons, but then it failed. Uh, it collapsed. So it wasn't a good idea. But guess what? Right now, this uh, innovation which was forgotten uh, is coming back to the life because of new kind of sport, because of the future, there is a super interesting article on Mashable predicting that mono wheel will somehow at some point come back to life in our lives. Uh, so basically failing is not always so bad because it's also learning. It was a learning for me, it's a learning for mono wheel, and it's also somehow building a value. It's not a wasted time. It's a, it's a thing which we can build a future innovation on. And it's good to fail. Uh, I'm traveling a lot on startup events across the CE, and I see the, the people really admitting about the failure, not being ashamed of, of failing, and just exposing how they learned from, from, the, from all the failure. Uh, and it's good because not trying is 100% failure. So you just need to, to try. But to the point. Uh, watch this movie. It, it was launched yesterday by, by Intel. Uh, please treat it like your, like your uh, homework. It's very good with Krzysztof Gonciarz. You know the guy? Yeah, I know you, do. you know the guy. Uh, it's about just doing, just making the, the first step, failing and iterating. And I came to the, uh, to the assumption, to the thesis, that we are a mobile generation of constant failing, but also doing, acting, and iterating. So we are not so worried about harm, about the waste we generate. We just keep trying. Is it good or bad? OK, so this whole failing, iterating, living in a mobile first or first mobile generation, what does it bring to us, to our lives? 
to our infrastructure, politics, economics. Of course, smartphones. Yeah? Genius. Wow. Brilliant slide. Uh, they become an artificial and natural, at the same time, extension of our hands. Uh, this picture from past centuries has changed recently to this. People at the train or bus stop just using a smartphone, and the guy in the red circle, he is a weirdo. He is not normal any anymore, yeah? Because he is not using a smartphone on the, on the bus stop. This is my nephew, my nephew Felix. He is 10 months old, and he lives in, in Qatar, in Doha. And basically, on this photo, he is making first selfie in his life. He is pushing a button on the smartphone which I which I'm holding, and he's making a selfie. How does it sound to you? And I'm also sure that he's thinking, okay, I'm making a selfie. I'm sure of it. Yeah, the infrastructure around us also has changed. We used to have these standard uh, local phones, now we have mobile phones, but we have another form of infrastructure, electricity. I have this, this biggest power bank, it weighs one kilogram, but they take it to, to all the conferences just, just to have the, the phone ready and powered for, for a few days. Um, they, al they also brought to us a special lines to walk with smartphones. Have you seen such thing? Yeah, it's, it's very popular in Asia. It's becoming more and more popular. Uh, and basically, uh, when do I work at Hubrom in Krakow, downstairs you can find these kind of lines and you can use them. Really. Um, yeah, weird, good, bad. Let's see. Uh, do you know this movie? Who knows? Okay. And do you know which part is, is it? Yeah, the second. Okay, the t-shirt, the inspiration t-shirt for you. I hope so. This is the second part. It was recorded in, uh, in 80s, and it shows May 2015. It's back to the future, yeah? The, the second part. And can you, can you tell me what kind of devices, trends, the brilliant screenwriter uh, predicted? VR, okay, virtual rea reality, augmented reality. What else? Yeah, smartwatch. Yeah, the, the laser pointed, pointer makes no sense. Okay, so at the hand of at the hand of the guy, you can see uh, a wearable smartwatch. Uh, you can see virtual reality, Google Glass, whatever, Oculus Rift, and the ties. The ties, uh, which in the movie change the, the color, the stripe, the structure, uh, dependingly on the mood or the part of the day. Um, yeah, this is just the film, yeah. But in this film also we had something like hoverboards. You remember them, I hope so, yeah? And guess what? Success successfully funded uh, a year ago on Kickstarter, hoverboards, uh, ready to work on a special tracks. One from Lexus. Also ready, also working, yeah? Brave new mobile generation for us. And this kind of one-wheeled hoverboard, also working. And soon being brought to, to markets around us. Connectivity, intelligent light bulbs, generating Wi-Fi signal. Why the hell do you need a router? So if a, if a light bulb can generate a Wi-Fi signal and also can detect a thief, a burglar in your home. Google and Facebook competing to, to provide a free access to the internet worldwide for you because of the big data they can gather and the advertising they can make afterwards. G you, you, interfaces and the way we operate with machines, yeah? The flat 2D interfaces on our smartphones will, will probably change. And we'll be, we'll brought, brought gestures to the, to the third dimension. Uh, holograms, the same. The first attempts to work with holograms using Kinect uh, and 3D projections are working and, and being brought to the, to the market. And now to the, uh, to the 3D printing. 
I'm sure you've heard about the, the trend. And this is the blade, a car which is fully 3D printed below 24 hours. And it's an electric car. And uh, the guys who are creating this stuff, are, they claim that it can be faster than Tesla and cheaper than Tesla, the blade. Uh, Fudini. This is one of the coolest examples. This is a food 3D printer. You can print your own burger, pizza, whatever in your home. Why do you need chef skills or, or receipt? Yeah? You can just download a special receipt from the internet. Uh, and it doesn't look so nice and tasty right now, but they are really trying. Yeah? The chocolate, uh, I've heard it tastes super nice. Uh, the pizza, it's also good in taste, but they need to work on the, on the um, uh, outcome. Yeah? How does it look like? Uh, 3D printed buildings made from concrete. Why do you need uh, a bunch of uh, engineers working on a construction site when you can put this, this big uh, 3D printer and just print the building in 24 hours, the, the frame of the building, yeah? Um, artificial skin being 3D printed by L'Oreal in Italy. Right now, only for uh, medical reasons, for, for burns of the skin, but soon also for cosmetics, yeah? So why do you need a plastic surgeon in the future? Why do you need a, a bunch of specialists in a mobile generation while you can download a recipe on your smartphone and 3D print whatever you need? Uh, this is one of the coolest examples, 3D printed drugs. It's working. You can print an antibiotic, something for medicine, but think about illegal drugs, how the whole market, black market, can change. And why do you need a doctor or a drug dealer, yeah, in some cases? Uh, bionic lenses, they adapt to your, to your eye, so you can wear them for the lifetime, till the end of your life, and they give you supervision. It's super expensive right now, but the surgery cost, takes like eight minutes. So imagine this thing being popularized and being brought to the hospitals around you. Uh, robots being transplanted to your blood and repairing it. So self-repair, automatic uh, discovery of diseases, bacteria, viruses. Strange hotel in Asia, fully operated by robots. Only three people behind the computers in, the, in a magazine on the backstage operating the whole thing. The, the price for one night is over $1,000 and it's fully booked for the next half of the year. So, why do you need operators in hotels? Smaller example from Poland, Pura Hotel in Wrocław. Uh, very strongly uh, technology oriented. Not so many robots, but being very close to the Asian equivalent. Okay, so, yeah. So why I showed this, uh, these examples, yeah? What are we aiming at? Our mobile first, or as I, as I said, the first mobile generation is aiming for automated life and predictions. No work. Marta, who is sit, uh, sitting there from, uh, from Business Insider, he wrote a cool article about Sam Altman from Y Combinator stating that a work soon will uh, we really lose the value. And some of us will stop working. And we'll, we'll work less because it will be automated and, uh, and AI will come to, the, to the all areas of the, of the business and to all the markets. And also the third pillar, self-repair and self-improve. So imagine uh, rich people having the organs being planted in some distant factories just to do whatever they want and self-repair and self-improve. Okay, so what about our kids? If we put all these people, our children, to this automated, predictable, uh, AI generation, 
What about behavioral skills? What about learning? They will be, become dumber. This is the first question you should ask yourself uh, after the speech today. And the second one, what about our brains? What, we, what if we don't learn so much at the first side, and from the other side, uh, think that we are not genetic, genetically prepared for this much of information. So basically, our brain will become more tired, more exhausted, and new kind of diseases will happen. So this all sums up to the, to the statement that we do, do not live in a digital revolution era, but rather a digital evolution. And we are being adopted and we are adopting to the techno technology of our times. So in this world, the whole markets, industries, economies uh, will die, collapse, transform, change, scale, escalate, and so on. Uh, and in this world of very dynamic change, disruption usually comes from out of the sector. Like a cigarette come for the tobacco industry. This is a guy, he is a former prime minister of, of Finland, and he said once that, uh, that iPhone destroyed Nokia and iPad destroyed the whole paper industry in, in Finland. So this is an example of how a big corporation can destroy politics, economy in a country. This is the second example, blockbuster chain of, of DVD distribution uh, stores in US. They had around 9,000 stores 10 years ago. Do you know how many stores they have right now? Sorry? A few, yeah, like four to, four to 10. And can you say which product, service, startup influenced on this? Of course, Netflix. Um, it was founded in the 90s. The, the first team was a few people. They received an investment from the very beginning. But it was a startup, crushing the whole big corporation. The second example, uh, booksellers, Barnes & Noble from US, also a few thousand stores being destroyed by, by the online service. Which one? Amazon. IKEA, this is an example of very smart corporation, very smart company. They do not only uh, say that it's fun to make furniture at home, but at the same time uh, they, uh, they lower, they make, they make more effective the, the cost structure in the company. Not only because the uh, outsourcing montage to you, but also by lower logistic cost, fuel, transportation, everything. So IKEA is also smart in the diversity, economic ground, because they came into new industry recently in US. You know which industry? They are investing right now and developing own products. In insurance, they find out that young couples are mostly buying uh, furniture in IKEA, so they offer them insurance for, for baby, for the whole life, for healthcare and everything. Brilliant. Uh, Intel, I, have, I had the pleasure to talk with, with Martin Heika, which is the, uh, the president of Intel Capital, and he said once that one of the biggest uh, mistakes made by Intel, it was coming to mobile too late, to, to mobile processing. And what about Kodak? They were blind. They were blind for digital cameras. They stick to the, to the traditional ones, and the whole business collapsed. The point is that corporations in this digital transformation era, they need to found, find out how to make a business model work again. They need to diverse the business model. They need to find new ways of income. And all of them, this is just six, six examples, we have thousands of them are doing this. So for instance, Kellogg's, Serial, they are looking for startups, for innovation, they are creating acceleration units and, and so on. Why the hell the, the 
uh, bowl of cereal need, need innovation, yeah? If it's just a tasty muesli. They, did, they do, because, because of logistics, of e-commerce, of the whole processes in the company. Uh, PNG, Lufthansa also. Recently in Poland, uh, we had established uh, some innovation units for startups from MasterCard, from, from Uber, from New Balance, and all of them are looking for startups in, in Poland just to diverse the business, just to look for the innovation from the outside. And this is a picture about telecoms. So at some point, 10 years ago, a big telco companies, they thought that they were kings that they can possess the, the whole market, that they can gather the income, just sit and wait, yeah? And it was a wrong assumption. What's the, what's the core business of, of a telco operator? It's not, a, yeah, it's not a tough question. So if you are not answering, it's either boring or, or, or not under, understandable from my side. Okay, so... The, the, the core business of a telco operator uh, is voice messaging. And it's being threat, it's being endangered by a few startups, products, services, like Skype, like, like Viber, like Facebook Messenger. So it's yet another example that the big corporation must feel some, some bad uh, threats and dangers. Uh, and that's why telco operator from, from Germany, called Deutsche Telekom, which is a T-Mobile in Poland, created Hubraum, which is an innovation unit coming, uh, coming to, to help develop and, and, and help and invest in startups, yeah? Uh, so we are innovation hub for, for Central and Eastern Europe. We support startups from Poland, from Czech, from Slovakia, uh, Balkans, as far to, to Greece. We are looking for mobile, Internet of Things, cloud, smart connected solutions, not only directly connected to telco. Uh, and we give a, a few pillars of, of support, which is an investment, seed investment, so hard money, uh, co-working space, mentoring, so uh, uh, a bunch of nice guys, successful entrepreneurs with exits, just wanting to, to help your startup, your innovative idea, and also smart money which is our unique selling proposition. It can be marketing campaigns, bundling with offers, or just pre-installation on, on T-Mobile phones. We have 150 million clients in, in Europe. And the main, uh, the main reason why startup, startups fail is because they cannot reach the, the critical mass of customers. And basically, that's what we provide, customers for, for your idea, for your project. Uh, we have one program dedicated for Internet of Things uh, projects. It's called Challenge Up with Intel and Cisco. We have an Intel representative also sitting there, Carol. Um, and Challenge Up uh, 2016, the second edition, is taking place right now in seven cities in Europe. We are incubating 12 startups. And the next edition for the next year is also coming for sure. And this is our flagship program. It's called Warp. We organized five editions so far, evaluated 3,000 startups, and 58 of them we incubated in, in Krakow. Uh, okay, so what the telco operator, Hubram, whatever, is interested in? Uh, you, can be, you can be surprised, because for instance, drones. This is a solution from, uh, from Warsaw. It's called Uavionix and we accepted them for one of our programs. We accelerated them, and we decided to, to go deeper into, into talks and cooperation. And can you, can you think, basing on the stuff I presented before, why, uh, why a telco operator should be interested in drones? What can be the, the case? Remote internal access, okay. So a network coverage in, in distant locations, for instance. Okay, but also imagine uh, monitoring of telco lines, yeah, or providing this solution to other corporations just to help them monitor energy, electricity, media, gas lines also. 
Another solution, you can find the guys with a stand somewhere there, the Bispiration corner, uh, is like intelligent waste bin. And I'm keeping asking myself, why the hell I need my, uh, my trash in the internet or in social media? But basically, it's not the, it's not the case. Uh, this this Abini, which is a wonderful solution, helps to automatically segregate and also compress the the waste and send it to cloud to gather and measure the data to help the cleaning companies do it the, the job proper in a smart city world. So one one again once again a telco operator diversing the business and bringing new stuff innovation. Uh, just to extend the business model and find new ways of income. Uh, and one of my favorites, Typing DNA, coming from Romania, which was accepted to, to the last program in Krakow. And they, are, they figured out that apart from uh, retina in our eyes and fingertips, there is also other unique way how we can distinguish every single people in the world every single person. Uh, and it's the way how we type on a computer board, on a computer keyboard. It's unique for all of us. After 10 to 60 se seconds, you can predict, you can define who is typing on, on a particular keyboard. And we accepted them to the, to the fast track program right now. And we are developing the solution together with them just to help mobile users authenticate, log in in a better, smarter way, and also provide this solution for banks on, or, on, or other companies connected to the, uh, to the security. This is uh, a screenshot from, uh, from Hubram office in Krakow. We have a plenty of events going there, a plenty of people. Uh, you can also find me there from time to time. And maybe uh, for, the, for the password, Bitspiration, if you ping me sometime when you're in Krakow, you have uh, a free desk, uh, a free cup of coffee, free Wi-Fi, creative space for a few days or a week, uh, and maybe a glass of cold beer in Krakow together with, the, with this bundle. So feel free to, uh, to ping me uh, with, the, with the password Bispiration. Uh, and thank you very much for this quick talk. <laughs> everyone okay sorry I was trying to gather if all the I'm gonna allow one question from the crowd actually if they want if you're okay with that Philip sure. of course so if, uh, if anyone has one question there's only one question uh, did I see a hand raised no yeah so uh, you have exactly 10 seconds to decide if you want to talk to Philip or not otherwise of course you can talk to him afterwards anyone has a question oh come on you're really tough on me today right oh god okay then Thanks. If that's, it's a, that's it, you can actually, oh, at the moment I was about to close. Yeah, please, very happy that you actually are the least shy person on this stage today. Hey, Philip. Um, it's Kasia. Um, so could you please share some of the success stories? Like who, what company, what product you're, you're really proud of? Um, and like the whole process of co cooperation. Thanks, Gosha. Uh, okay, so there is actually one. Uh, it's coming from, from from Ukraine, and it's called Echo is Me. Uh, do you know Shazam? You know Shazam, yeah? It discovers what kind of music it's playing around. So they created a Shazam for electricity. You plug the Echo is Me device in the power box in your home. Uh, it measures the amplitude, correct characteristics, voltage. Uh, it mingles this data, and it defines all the devices in your home just by this one single channel of information. That's so cool. for instance, Philips dishwasher, um, iPhone charger, and so on. And it helps to optimize the electricity consumption by all these um, devices. And also it sends you some, some tips. For instance, OK, so your, your child, Tom, came back in the night at 1, and he's playing Xbox till the, till the morning, yeah? Guess what? He's, coming back from the party or something. So Echo is Me was accepted to work program. They had no idea about the, about the solution. They made some prototypes in, in pizza boxes, really, and really sit with them, tried to develop the concept. 
We invited uh, 30 directors of energy companies from Europe to our office ju just to sit with them. And then we, we organized a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, now they are part of Virgin Media Accelerator with some meaningful successes and product being launched and, and sent to customers. And that, thank you very much, Philip. Thanks.